Hi, my name is Dr. Tim St. Ange with Thrive Chiropractic in Branson, Missouri. So most people go to the chiropractor for the first time because they have some back or neck pain. And that's great because chiropractic is very effective at relieving back and neck pain. But if I did not tell you the rest of the story about chiropractic, then I would be doing you a great disservice. You see, regular chiropractic care has a very positive effect on, long, on your long-term health. Now, if you'll give me about 10 or 12 minutes of your attention, I will explain that to you in this video. So I'm gonna start off by telling you a little bit of a story that happened, it actually happened, with me and my daughter, Maddie. So this was in 2016. My family was taking a summer trip to Hilton Head Island from Branson. So we, we flew, we flew from Springfield. We had to go through the Atlanta airport. We had about a three or four hour layover. And we actually didn't get to the home that we were going to until about 5.30 in the morning. It was a horrendous trip. So we get to the house, we uh, go to bed, and we got up way too early the next day, about, uh, about two hours after we went to sleep. So a couple of hours after that, my daughter comes and says, hey dad, I don't feel very well. So I said, well, why don't you go to sleep? Um, just lay down and take a nap. Well, lunch came and went, Maddie was still sleeping. Dinner came and went, Maddie was still sleeping. And finally 10 o'clock rolls around and my wife Jenny and I decide to go to bed. So we, we go to bed, Maddie was sleeping in our room um, on the little floor, little bed made on the floor uh, for her to sleep. And so we go to bed. Well, about two o'clock that morning, Jenny comes in, or Jenny wakes me up and says, hey, Jen, uh, Maddie has a fever of like 106, and I think she, I think she, I saw her have a seizure. And I thought, oh boy, that's not good. So I, I held Maddie while Jenny started calling around to see if we could get her to a hospital or urgent care center, emergency room, anything like that. Uh, and so I was, as I'm holding Maddie, I'm watching her and uh, of course I'm feeling her. She's very, very hot. She had a, uh, we, I think I took her temperature one time, it was 106 degrees. And <clears throat> at one point she actually, I saw her have a seizure myself. Now this was the absolute scariest thing I've ever experienced in my life. This is my little two year old girl having this crazy high scary high fever and and these seizures and so what i did next i really can't explain why i did it at the time at the time i'd been in practice been in chiropractic practice for about 10 years and all i did was really treat neck and back pain um but for some reason uh, i believe i believe god led me to do it but for some reason i checked her for uh, subluxation and subluxation is, is like a kink in the chain, but it's in your spine, right? So a little kink in the spine. So I'm check, I check her spine and sure enough, the very top of her spine, just below the base of her head, she had a little subluxation, a little kink there. And so I adjusted it and sure enough, nothing happened, right? Um, so I pick her up, I take her into the living room and I sit down with her in, in a, a little chair while Jenny continued to try to find some place for us to take her. And Jenny was having no luck. I sat there. So probably five, six, seven minutes go by and she starts to cool off. Now when this all started, she, she was so hot. It's so hot holding a, a little kid that has that high of a fever. It's like holding a radiator in your arms. So I could very much feel her start to cool off. So I checked her temperature again. It was down to about 103. Couple minutes later, I checked it again. It was down to 101. And then after, after checking her at about 101, I started to notice her kind of move around a little bit. Up to that point, she, her eyes were closed. She was just, she was limp. There was no life in her, it seemed. And after about 101 degrees, she started to move around a little bit. I checked her temperature again. It was 99 degrees. And just after I checked her with a 99 degree temperature, she opened her eyes, sat up in my lap, looked me straight in the eye, smiled and said, I love everyone. And that was the end of it. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That was the end of it. She played the rest of the week with her brother and her cousins like nothing had ever happened. And to this day, four or so years later, 
I don't think she's had a, a fever. She certainly hasn't had a high fever like that. I'm sure she's run a little low grade fever, um, but there's been no, no um, consequences of that whatsoever. And so the question though is how did this happen? And how, um, how can what happened to Maddie and that adjustment that I did to her, how can doing that to you have a positive effect on your health? And that is gonna be the purpose of this video today. What most people think that chiropractors do is something to bones, that we are bone doctors, but this is not accurate. What we are actually affecting is the nervous system. You see, the, the nervous system is the first system in the body to develop. It controls the development of every other system in the body. It regulates all of those systems throughout the entire span of your life. It processes everything that we experience in our mind, in our body, and in our spirit. And it controls all function and healing throughout the life span. Your heart beats at the rate and rhythm that it beats at because of messages sent from your brain to your heart via the spinal cord and nerves. Your digestive system is controlled by nerves that travel from your brain down to your gut, and they control the various functions of the many parts of your gut. For instance, if the nerve that controls the sphincter muscle at the top of your stomach is not functioning properly, you might end up with indigestion or heartburn. Your entire body is controlled by your brain and spinal cord via these nerves. Now for your nervous system to function properly, your spine, which encompasses your brain and spinal cord must also function properly. Let's talk about your spine for just a minute. Your spine is made up of 24 bones that stack on top of each other. Your skull, which contains your brain, sits on top of that. Between the bones is a softer structure called the spinal disc. The spinal disc creates cushioning and allows movement. There are also two nerves that exit below each bone. Once those nerves exit the spine, they will branch into thousands of smaller nerves, ultimately going to every cell, tissue, and organ in the body. For your nervous system to send the proper messages to the various organs, muscles, and joints in your body, each of the 24 bones in your spine must have proper alignment and proper motion. If there is a loss of proper alignment or motion, we call that situation a subluxation. Think of a subluxation like a kink in a bicycle chain. There are two main problems with subluxations. First, they may interfere with the brain communicating with the body like static on a cell phone. And second, over time, if it is not corrected, subluxations cre can create permanent degenerative damage in the spine. What seems to be hard for people to comprehend is that subluxations may be painful or they may be completely painless, at least until they become more advanced. So what causes subluxation? The simple answer is stress, but stress can look a lot of different ways. For instance, trauma like a sports injury or car accident can create a subluxation. Sitting with poor posture for hours per day can create subluxations. The kind of stress that makes your shoulders go up around your ears can also do it, as can poor diet. For some people, subluxations can go all the way back to when they were born, caused by the doctor pulling on the head to get the baby out. And some people already have joint damage, permanent joint damage, in their spine by the time they're 20 or 30 years old. As crazy as it might sound, this joint damage is sometimes considered normal by a lot of textbooks, but I can assure you there is nothing normal about it. What it is is common, but just because something is common does not make it normal. So what do we do about this? In our office, we provide specific spinal adjustments to reduce your subluxations, and we teach you exercises that you can do in your home to help you to mobilize and strengthen the muscles that stabilize your spine. For people that come in on a regular basis, which is about every seven to 14 days and get their spine adjusted, they typically have more energy, less pain, better sleep, less need for medication, better mood. They have a, a less risk of, for disability. They tend to get sick less often. They have improved concentration, 
And for people that play sports, they, their sports performance improves and they have better mobility. It is almost impossible to tell you exactly what health problems are being caused by subluxation or how your body will improve over time, but consistently with practice member after practice member, we see people's lives improving in unexpected and exciting ways. So let me just say this. If all you want from your care is to get some back relief and get out the door, that's fine. I will be happy to take great care of you, and if it happens in the future, feel free to come back. But if you really want to experience the more profound health benefits of chiropractic care and utilize chiropractic care the way that my family and I do, then ask us about one of our spinal wellness membership programs the next time that you're in the office because we're really excited about watching you and the rest of our community experience the same benefits that my family and I have been experiencing over the past several years. God bless and I look forward to seeing you soon.